thank, thanks for coming. So we're, it will be a short talk, frankly. It's like a lightning talk, 25 minutes. Uh, very practical, nothing crazy. Uh, and yeah, uh, we're talking about the how to make or uh, how to add security layer to your APIs and apps in the cloud native environments, primarily in the Kubernetes. So how many of you folks use Nginx in your environments? Okay, half. How many of you use Kubernetes now? Not too many. I bet the next year will be much more. <laughs> but anyway, so we have a tightest agenda here. Uh, I tried to make this talk very practical so we can like, uh, have a lot of takeaways right away. But first, uh, let's talk about Nginx. So we're, why we're talking about the Nginx. So we're, the thing is that you already have like, Nginx in your infrastructure. Like, I, I mean, most of you already have it as a load balancer or as a web server. And uh, your traffic is an already analyzed uh, with the Nginx. And the, the good thing that Nginx is also the foundation for the uh, Kubernetes ingress controller. So we're basically, if you use an ingress controller, you also use the Nginx and you can use all the capabilities. Uh, and another thing that Nginx can be easily deployed in a, as a sidecar in every Kubernetes pod. So basically, you can like add Nginx natively in any uh, application pod, which is which is very nice. So we're, this is just the standard way how you usually put the Nginx with your apps. And basically, you can put WAF and any other modules there. So we're, uh, for, for those who don't know what is Nginx, so it's a very popular web server that is a very scalable which is very good, but it's also like very easy to customize and very easy to uh, enhance with different kind of plugins. Uh, as I said, the Nginx is also the part of the ingress controller. So we're basically, if you're using Kubernetes and you have ingress, you have all, all the traffic coming through the ingress controller. And um, this is a perfect spot where you can add the security layer. And uh, as I said, you can also deploy the Nginx as a sidecar are in our application pod, which is one, once again very good because you can add this Nginx with the security modules to pretty much every microservice you already have. Uh, let's start with the uh, how to set up the WAF for the uh, Kubernetes environment. So basically, if you're using the Nginx, it's very easy to use, like uh, just the re regular Nginx without Kubernetes. It's very easy to use. You just like uh, go to the config file, uh, add some directives there, like mass security enabled, and you get the um, mass security on in your environment. With the ingress uh, and with the Kubernetes, it's almost the same. So you just like use the config map. So this, this is the file where you can actually uh, can add it and configure the uh, ingress controller. So basically, you just need to add a few more modules there. So we're, as you can see on, the, on this uh, slide, like, like enable mass security true, enable OWASP mass security CRS true. So and this is pretty much it. Uh, you also can add uh, some additional data here. And uh, for instance, where you want to put the uh, uh, audit f files, this is important. Uh, and I will tell you later why it's very important. So basically, if you do this, uh, you have the WAF deployed in your uh, Kubernetes environment already. So we can send the curl command uh, with some malicious payload, a SQL injection here, and you get 403. It means that the request was blocked. So it's very easy. Uh, so what we do next is uh, uh, what we'll do next is build a kind of dashboard to get some visibility of what is happening, uh, and also to set up uh, it also set up a kind of alerting so we're, to know what is happening in real time. Uh, the setup is very basic actually. So you once again you have this Kubernetes environment and you have Nginx. You can you can have just the Nginx, so it's like Kubernetes is not a requirement. Uh, we will get all the log files with a few in D. You can do, use log stash. With, for the log stash, you already have the module as well. Uh, and basically, the Fluent, Fluent uh, D will get all the logs from the Nginx mod security, put into the Elasticsearch. Then we'll use Kibana to make a kind of dashboard. And then we use the last alert, so this is a project by Yelp, to send you real-time notifications to Slack or email. I will cover it later. So we're, the setup is very uh, basic. So we're, we store all the logs uh, in your, like some log files in the uh, ingress controller. So our Fluentd, basically the special daemon, which will analyze and parse all the logs. And then the Flu Fluent sends all the logs to the Elasticsearch. Uh, with the Kibana, you just make the different kind of dashboards or different kind of search queries. It's very easy to do. And then you set up the uh, alerting. So we're, uh, Fluentd, the best way to run it is to run it as a sidecar in the 
our uh, ingress engine export. Uh, and what is good to do here to make the thing simple is to share a volume are uh, between the ingress engine X and the FluentD. So uh, in this case, the FluentD can access the mass security locks. Uh, this is just like, uh, I don't want to go through this, so it's very simple, but it, this will be in the slides so we can set up everything in your environment, so it's, it's very easy. Uh, after that, if you set up everything, you can open your the Elasticsearch UI and you will see that there are like all the events from EMR security about all the attacks uh, with the, some details there. You already have the in Elasticsearch. Uh, you can like set up Kibana and uh, like I don't want to go through all the dip, like deployment and setup. It's very easy. You can run it from the Docker now uh, with the predefined values. But basically, you can like set up different kind of dashboards uh, and have uh, stats on like how many attacks you see, uh, how many SQL injection requests, where the application responds with the like 500 error codes, something like that. Uh, it's pretty cool to put on the TV screen somewhere in the office. Uh, but pretty much soon you will understand that. Okay, dashboard is nice to have, but like uh, I don't really want to like to look at this dashboard. I want to know when something wrong is happening. So and this is where you need to set up a kind of alerts. Um, so the next thing is like how to set up the alerts. And once again, it's very easy. Uh, and the, the reason why it's so easy is because we have this uh, like uh, a very good project by the company called Yelp. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know the Yelp. Uh, and the project is called Elast Alert. Uh, it's open source, and what it does actually, it just takes the, all the events uh, from the Elasticsearch and can send the alerts uh, to your uh, to whatever you use. So basically, you can, uh, if you have some data in Kibana, you can make the alert and send notifications. So we're, for instance, uh, you can have the alerts when something is matching, like at least X events in Y time or if there's a rate of events increases or decreases I like all the different kinds of criteria you can use here so it's it's very scalable and it, uh, you will soon soon understand uh, how powerful this uh, uh, mechanism is actually uh, you can send the alerts to your email to Jira you can send it to different kind of messaging apps like uh, uh, HipChat or Slack or Telegram. You can send it to PagerDuty, Opgenie, or whatever other tools you are using. So it's it's very scalable. Uh, the good thing is like it's very easy to set up as well. So you basically are like creating the uh, trigger, like I, I call it WAF trigger now. And as you see, we're using the data for the, from the mod security. We're taking the data within the 10 minutes time frame. Uh, we're using some filters to like to give the uh, LS alert to understand when we need to send the notification, uh, and this is what is happening uh, when the trigger uh, happens. So we're, we're saying, hey, we want to send a Slack chat, like Slack message. So we basically, put here the uh, the uh, details of this Slack bot, like the name of it, and then we're sending the uh, notification, like by saying, hey, the CRS rule happens here and the host and the path is in this. So it's very easy to do. So we're eventually, we'll see different kind of alerts just in your Slack. So it's super scalable way how you can uh, get a real time understanding of what is happening. And you don't need to go to the dashboards, which, which is pretty much cool. Uh, the next thing I want to cover is uh, the situation when you want to deploy WAF or any other tool, but uh, like somebody from your team is saying, hey, I don't want any security in place because it will break the apps. Uh, so let's try it out first and, like, and to, uh, be sure that it's safe. So in this ways, you can mirror the traffic. And uh, uh, the idea is that you set up a kind of additional backend uh, with the WAF, for instance, uh, and you send the copy of each request of this additional backend from your low bouncer for the Nginx. And, Thankfully, Nginx, uh, a year and a half ago, introduced this uh, capability, which is called Miro. So basically, you can uh, uh, say that I want to Miro all the requests that come to this location, and you're setting up this so like Miro location. So it's, it's very easy to set up. What happens after that is that every request will come to the like your main backend, uh, to your app, basically. But it, also, the copy of this request will go to the web and it will be analyzed. And there is no chance that it can anyhow affect the traffic, which is pretty much awesome. We do a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, POCs are with using this kind of stuff, because like, customers don't want to break the apps, especially during the POC. Uh, speaking about WAF, by the way, so we're, 
Uh, if we're using for the web, for the Nginx, you basically have a choice of the like some open source tools and commercial products. Uh, speaking about the open source tools, like obviously you have more security. We mentioned it today, and you have Ngin uh, Nexi. Uh, this is the uh, web specifically written for the uh, you know, for the Nginx. I will cover it later. Com from a commercial side, uh, there is a kind of ng web products like Wallarm, where I want I want the co-founders. Another product is Signal Sciences, uh, and it's by the way developed here in LA. So I'll cover it a little bit in more detail. So mod security is very fast. I pretty know that you know all everything about the mod sec, so I don't want to uh, cover it a lot. But basically, uh, what is very nice about the mod security is that you can set up different kind of rules to analyze the request and also to analyze the response. And uh, this uh, gives a lot of capabilities. Uh, but the pain in the neck here is the false positives. So we're, unfortunately, you need to deal with a huge number of the false positives. And uh, there are some best practices here. So one of them is actually to use the public rule set only in monitoring mode. And if you really want to use it in a blocking mode, you can like set up this, like the security rules from scratch for you. So basically, you can say, like, uh, I want to analyze the request and see if there is a payload like this. And only if there is a, a response like this, like consider this as an attack. So uh, there are a lot of hacks. And he, like, I recommend you to read this mod security handbook. It's one of the best one if you want to know how to really tune the uh, mod security. Another thing you, uh, uh, I found a very nice approach to try is that uh, to try the uh, method by the Christian Fellini. So this guy, what he basically does here, grab all the mod security log files, and then he run a basic statistics on all the events and see uh, how many events are within the certain threshold. And this is the way a very like system like a, a, a very uh, a straightforward way how we can like step by step reduce the false positives for every particular app. So you can you can read all the details uh, using this link. The bad thing is like this process is kind of painful and it's endless. Like uh, when you will update the app, you probably will need to like in the worst case you will need to do this uh, once again. And this is not cool. So the Nexi, this product is not that are popular as the mod security. But basically, uh, the good thing about the Nexi is that it doesn't use signatures. It doesn't use regular expressions. Uh, it use, uses a kind of tokens. So basically, uh, if you have this like SQL injection, uh, SQL operators like select, union, update, uh, and the Nexi sees those uh, keywords in the traffic, inc it increases the uh, score of the request. And eventually, if the scores uh, if the score is more than some particular threshold, it considers this request to be malicious. Uh, so Nexi rules looks like this. Uh, it's pretty scary, but you don't need to tune them. What you need to tune is a kind of whitelist. So we're, unfortunately, the false positives is also a case for the Nexi. Uh, but uh, the good thing here is that Nexi comes with a special tool which, which allow you to analyze all the traffic and create a kind of whitelist. So we're, you don't need to, like, to tune the rules manually. You just like turn this uh, tool, then uh, run the uh, traffic, and the Nexi will create the whitelist for you, which is pretty much awesome. Uh, speaking about the commercial webs, so I don't want to make this uh, a lot of admitizing here, so just a few words about what we do. So we're, uh, we do the NGWAF, and we also do the desk scanner. Uh, and the way we do WAF is that we are not using any signatures. Uh, we use machine learning to identify what is the structure of your app, so we can create the rules specifically for every particular app and the, uh, microservice you have. Uh, and we also use neural networks to analyze all the attacks you have to identify if you have any false positives. So we're, uh, there are a lot of other techniques, like the gram analysis, like and not using any signatures in place. But eventually, you see like what is the app structure you have. So you do not, don't need to do this manually. And you see all the events in the very nice UI. So we're, if you want to try it out, come to our booth or just uh, leave a request, or, and we show it down for you. Uh, the next thing I want to cover is the uh, behavioral-based security. So we're, uh, eventually, if you set up a process, you will get a lot of sources of the data, like the web and then some kind of feeds and then you have some threat intelligence feed so you want to kind of weigh how you can correlate all those data in one place and uh, uh, the pro uh, open source project called RepShit is actually one of one of the uh, most good ones uh, so what basically it allows to do is to get all the sources like 
uh, the uh, data from the mass security or other web or in the, uh, some external feeds or whatever you have. And you kind of combine it in one place. Now let me show you a demo. So uh, you have all the requests, and then they analyze with a set of the tools you have. And then all the events are correlated in the Redis data sheet. And it basically, like, you, this data is basically used to make a decision if this request is malicious or not. So this is just a great framework how we can correlate a lot of feeds in the one place. And once again, the, uh, this rep sheet thing is developed for the Nginx. So it's, it's very easy to connect there. Uh, the last chapter here is how to protect your bots, uh, how to protect your bots, not bots, but <laughs> your apps against all kind of uh, like uh, bots and behavioral based attacks. So, uh, unfortunately, bots are like, it's very hard to compete with bots nowadays. So, it's always the can cat and mice games where you can put some protection in place, but the scrappers, they will try to overcome it. Uh, but there, is, like, there are a bunch of things that you can do easily. So we're speaking about the boss, what I'm saying, it's a application level de uh, denial of service attacks, it's site scrapping, uh, it's a different kind of uh, abuse of your APIs and apps, a different kind of brute force, credential stuffing attacks. Uh, so we're, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you know all of this stuff. So one of the things you can try uh, is to use the so-called task cookie, uh, cookie module. Uh, what is it? It's a special module that is specifically developed to protect your apps against bots. Uh, so unfortunately, it doesn't work at the, against the APIs because it's uh, for, for the APIs because it is uh, the active approach. So uh, the way uh, Task Cookie works is uh, it uh, runs a different kind of straightforward checks. If the client supports cookies, if the client supports redirect, uh, if the client supports uh, JavaScript, or like I don't like this check, but if the client supports Flash, <laughs> uh, and a, uh, uh, there is a special uh, cryptography way how you can do that. Uh, it's a very nice way. Uh, it's a kind of proof of work. So we basically ask the client to execute some kind of task, and a, uh, if you see that the the client is smart enough and it can do all the redirects, uh, JavaScript, uh, there is a chance it's a, it's a real user. So unfortunately nowadays, like a lot of bots are so called the full browser stack. So with the Chrome, which is detached. Uh, with the Selenium tools, with the full JavaScript engine inside. Uh, it's so easy to develop like more complicated bots. But you will be surprised how many dumb bots are out there. So in many cases, you can use this test cookie thing to protect. Unfortunately, the project is not maintained anymore. Uh, but um, we tried it recently with one of the customer, and it works. Uh, and you also can take the source code and develop everything in Lua, for instance, or JavaScript for the Nginx. Uh, so like, the most important part is the idea how we can do that. Uh, the th like, one of the things uh, that you also can try to do, and it's fairly easy right now, is uh, to apply machine learning in uh, like, uh, neural networks to your log files. And you will be surprised how e easy it is. So uh, the approach is very easy. Like, if you can identify some malicious request by your eyes, uh, it's pretty much possible to train the uh, machine learning to identify all those uh, requests. And basically, if you see the bad request and good request, you can like make the supervised learning thing. Uh, I don't want to cover like what are the methods and the strategies. There are a lot of publications about that. Uh, but I want to give you a link to this kind of proof of concept. Uh, are by a guy who works for the Dropbox, I think. Uh, so this is the link. So basically, uh, uh, this is the source code of the, uh, um, uh, of the neural network that can analyze the access lock and uh, identify which of the requests are abnormalous. So uh, this is something that you can um, easily use. Um, the good thing here is that if you have the traffic with no attacks inside, I know that it's uh, pretty much impossible nowadays, but it just will help you to train the neural network uh, much, much, much more easily. Uh, the next thing is uh, to block those, uh, those uh, 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 clients that you don't want to see. So, uh, and basically, you can start with the uh, blocking some particular countries. Uh, I don't like this method, but like, if you put, like, definitely sure you don't want a, any uh, users connecting from some particular countries, you can use our GYP module. Uh, the bad thing that most of the feeds are not accurate, especially the free ones. So, uh, if you really want to use it, it's better to find a commercial feed. Uh, what you can block, and in many cases it can be very helpful, is the 
are IP ranges of different cloud and hosting providers because we see that like, like a lot of scripts, a lot of bots are really hosted in the uh, very same places where we host our apps. And uh, the good thing is uh, like the Google Cloud and the AWS and the Azure, they all have the public feeds with all their IP ranges. So we can take just there. Uh, and basically, you can Google, like you put the name of the uh, hosting company, uh, IP ranges, and there is a good chance that it will be publicly available. So we get the uh, list like this. So or it's I think it's Amazon. Yeah, it's Amazon. So basically, I'll have all the IP prefixes, and you know uh, if the uh, request is coming from the Amazon. And in many cases, it's it's uh, uh, it's an anomaly. Uh, you can also block everything that comes from Tor. Uh, in the uh, uh, Tor exits notes, like the information about them is public. However, the, it's not 100% accurate, like an up-to-date. If we go to the uh, official Tor uh, website, but there are some companies that provide more up-to-date data. Uh, there are some data about uh, the uh, IP addresses that are uh, kind of malicious, uh, so that are proxies, anonymizers, uh, and the MaxMine, this is the uh, commercial fee, so it's, it's not free of charge, but you can uh, uh, pay for it. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you know this, like all very old projects called Project Honeypot. So where you basically can get um, uh, the list of a kind of like malicious IPs there. Uh, one of the last tips here today is uh, what to do if you see that there is a DDoS attack coming and you can't do like you like you need temporarily to stop it. Uh, so in most cases, the only way is actually to find what is under attack. And like the uh, DDoSers, they will always try to find the most uh, resource uh, uh, intensive application endpoint, like like search, for instance. Uh, and I don't know. This is the like this is the worst thing to do. But sometimes this is the only thing you need to like you can do is like temporarily disable some application endpoint. Like and if you are, it's very hard to do it like within the app. You can do it with the nginx, and the nginx supports a special code. It's called four four four. And it, what's interesting about it is like it instantly closes connection and returns nothing. So it's very efficient way how we can block all the requests. Uh, and you also will get all the um, data about those requests in your log files. So we can easily block them with the, not upset, but IP set, <laughs> IP set command. So we're basically grab the access log, find everything with the 404 code there, and just block it. Um, and that was supposed the last slide, but I have actually one more. So we're speaking about the DDoS. And there are a lot of things, like the Nginx is very scalable, and in the, uh, it's very fast, but a, a, every source has, a, has its limit. So we're, uh, basically, you need to understand what is the limit and a, a scale accordingly. Uh, Nginx supports a lot of ways how you can tune it, so where you can uh, limit the buffers. And you see that there is limitations for the headers, or, uh, for the body, uh, so we can limit all those stuff. Uh, and you also can limit the timeouts, actually. So uh, there are a lot of directives the, within the Nginx that can help you to uh, set up the timeouts for the connections and so forth. So if you have, it's not only related to the DDoS, it's also related like if you're DevOps, DevSecOps, it's always good to know what directives and what tools you have to tune the performance of the Nginx. Unfortunately, there is no way, like I, I want to say you, this is the way how you can set up the ideals or values for all, for all those things, but it's, uh, yeah, there is not such a way. So it's like our days of work to identify which works for your app and which, which is not working. And it's 25 minutes, so I'm just right in time. So thanks everyone to coming. Hope, hope that uh, some of those tips were helpful. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. We have a booth here, like Waller booth, so come by and say hi to our folks. Can you post in the slides somewhere? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll share it in our Twitter. All right, awesome. It's definitely a lightning talk. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions? I can bring the mic over to you if you have any questions. OK. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh,